<laughs> well, how many co-founders have you found in the... No. I'm your first co-founder. Yeah. <laughs> I've had a, a few other co-founders. But we spent a lot of time talking about what would make a partnership work. Like yeah. a lot of time talking about it. And we spent a lot of time working together yes. as friends before we decided to start a business together. So that was helpful. We worked on a few projects together and um, started to build up a working relationship before we ever dreamed of working together for real and starting a business. So that was it was good to have that foundation. And we spent time talking about like what our personal plans were for the future. And I think that's important when you're gonna start into business. Like, yeah. Like I knew that Mel was planning on having kids. So, you know, like nothing in life, well, there's so many surprises <laughs> in life. Yeah. But at least that like we had, we talked about what we wanted in yes. our life outside of the business. And uh -huh. I think that helped make the business better. Yes, I would agree with that. I think that was kind of yeah. a good move on our part. Yeah. Be prepared for anything. <laughs> be prepared for a pandemic. Yeah, well, none of us knew. We knew to be prepared for anything before, but none of us knew that anything included a pandemic. So um, every day is really a lesson. Yeah, it really is. Every day we learn something new about the business. We learn something new about ourselves. We learn something new about the people who are in the studio. Yeah, and I think I I think something I certainly learned was to really invest time in getting a good solid team around us as well because we wouldn't have survived the last three years but especially not the last year without having a really good team. Yeah, team is key. Yeah. I think that's the like surround yourself with great people. I guess that would be the lesson really. Good one. So I'm an architect by training and I still do architecture. Um, and a lot of times my clients are like, aren't you doing ceramics now? Are you still doing architecture? But for me, it's the same thing. It's design. So whether it's a home or it's a restaurant or it's a plate, like I, I approach it in the same way. Sometimes that's a lot, I know. <laughs> approaching a plate like a project is a lot. But I have a good partner. So that. <laughs> um, and I was a social worker before. Before I moved to Los Angeles, I was a social worker in Australia, um, working with teens. Um, and then when I moved to Los Angeles, um, I was working, I was doing a, a, diff a few different things. I worked teaching sex ed for a while to high schoolers. That was very fun. That really um, helps when you're yeah. teaching ceramics. <laughs> so it really helped. Yeah, right. Exactly. That helped a lot when I when we came to teach ceramics, I just felt very comfortable speaking on a broad range of subjects. So, um, yeah. I think everybody who gets into this business gets into it because they love it. Right. And they love play and they like working with people. Yes. Yes, so, exactly. I was doing the same thing. We all try and do the same thing. We're all trying to provide an environment that's great to be creative in. Yeah, and a great community space. Oh yeah, that startups and ceramics. <laughs> <laughs> I think just be prepared to work all the time. All the time, especially at the beginning. Be prepared really to work all the time, uh, more than you think that you should be prepared for. <laughs> And it's, there's a business side to it too. So the, there's the making and then there's the business and the making is a physical toll on your body and then the business is a mental toll. So prepare to be tired. Yes. <laughs> be, yes. Be very tired. Yes. Yeah, I would agree with that. Mm -hmm.